What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Guys, if you're new to amateur radio, maybe you have a Bofang UV5R and you're looking to upgrade to something a little bit better, or maybe you're a seasoned veteran and you just kind of want to have a backup radio to knock around that doesn't cost a lot of money. Guys, I want to show you the Yaesu FT4XR. This is something I picked up uh, about a year ago. I bought this and I've just been loving it ever since. It's kind of just my go-to backup radio. It's not my main radio, but you know, every now and again, if I'm going on an excursion where maybe I don't want to bring my really expensive VX7R or something, uh, I'll bring this guy along with me. It's a great upgrade to the UV5R. It's a great radio to have as a backup. Uh, this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I paid for this, uh, but currently they're going for about $89.95 at gigaparts.com, uh, just because I like gigaparts. Buy it wherever you want, don't really care, but uh, it's just a great radio, packed full of features, dual band, VHF, UHF, uh, got a nice battery life to it, easy to program. It has a lot of features inside of it uh, that you're not gonna get in like a Bofang or something for you know 90 bucks. This is quite a steal, so let's hop over on the bench. I'll show you what the radio is all about. I'll hop in the menus and show you some of the different features that this has. And uh, yeah, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up. Let's check it out. Okay, so taking a look, this is what you get. Obviously, you get the radio itself. It's going to come with a eh, halfway decent antenna, and you're going to get your charging cradle. Now, one thing I want to point out really quick, the charging dock is actually a 12-volt input which means that you can either use the wall wart or you can take a battery with the coaxial end, plug it in here, and charge directly off of a 12 volt battery. That is a feature that I love to see in HTs that we don't see enough of, so kudos to Yesu for giving us a 12 volt input on the charging cradle. That means you can take this anywhere to go, portable, field day, whatever, and charge this right off of the 12 volt batteries if you don't have a uh, power source with you. So love that feature. Just wanted to point that out right up uh, in the beginning. Otherwise, you just use your wall wart. And I believe, I don't know where the box is, but I believe this came with a European uh, connector as well because this just pops off and you can swap it out. So uh, output on this is one amp uh, and 12 watts at 12 volts. So it takes a bit of time to charge, but the ability to charge off a 12 volt is phenomenal. As far as the radio itself, your antenna is going to be an SMA male on the radio itself, and obviously SMA female on the bottom of the antenna. And taking a walk around the radio, let's start on the left side. We've got this nice PTT button. It's actually like extended out. I really like the design of this. I think just ergonomically, uh, this is a very, very comfortable radio to hold and to use. Underneath that, we have two function buttons. That opens your squelch, and this second bottom one is a function button for short pressing. You can see the little F comes on the screen for uh, basically multi-functions on the buttons, or if you long press it, it's going to bring us into the menu, which we're going to get to eventually. Obviously, the front, we have a keypad. Now we can program in our frequencies with this. This is also going to function as a DTMF, so if we need to you know, maybe key up a repeater and get into a uh, talk group or an all-star link or something, you can do like that. Uh, you can also use the up and down arrows to navigate the VFO. You've got two programmable buttons here, the P1 and two, P2 that you can set in the functions that will uh, tell you different things. So I have this set to uh, change the power automatically if I just hit P2. I thought I had P1 program, but I guess I don't. On the right-hand side, we've got our speaker mic and where we also would insert a programming cable into there. Uh, it looks like it's a Bofang, but they're a bit tighter together, so you do need Yesu's proprietary cable for this, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. On the top, we have our on-off slash volume knob. This orange button is supposed to be a uh, alarm key. There we are. So if you press that, it transmits an alarm. And that goes out over the frequency that you're transmitting on, obviously our antenna here. And on the back, we've got our mic clip and the battery itself. The battery itself is a 1750 uh, milliamp hour battery. That just snaps into place, very, very easy. 
And there's this little latch here that you just kind of move over and it comes off. Fairly simple. Now as you can see, the screen only has one frequency on it and a lot of people were bummed that it didn't have a dual receiver, dual VFO. Uh, but this kind of does actually and, and it's really unique and it doesn't really bother me. I, I really like this radio. So let's say I want to monitor 14652, but I've also got all these memory channels in my radio. Like, okay, maybe I want to monitor this repeater here. So I'm going to leave this on uh, memory channel two. I'm going to go back to VFO I'm going to hit the function button and then I'm going to hit VFO memory and notice that DW came up there. That stands for dual watch. So about every five seconds, see how that just switched back? About every five seconds, this radio is going to go back to whatever memory I had programmed in on the other frequency and it's going to scan and monitor for a second for any traffic that's on there. And if there is traffic on there, it's going to stay on there. So you kind of get a dual watch, dual receive out of this. And I think that serves just as well as having two VFOs on here. Maybe not just as well, but it's pretty darn close. And that's something that I don't see a lot of people talking about with this radio. You can monitor two frequencies at the same time. We're doing it right now. So very, very cool. I like this a lot. So now let's dive in the menus and I'll show you some of the capabilities of this radio. Now anyone with a Bofang should feel relatively at home with this radio. Now where the Bofang has a menu button, here we're going to use this side button and we're going to long press it and that's how we're going to get into the menu. So right off the bat you can see we're menu one APO which is our auto power off. And kind of like on a Bofang we're going to hit this menu button again and we're going to hit the up or down button to select what our settings are. So let's say I want this to turn off in a half hour then we're going to hit the function button again. It's going to save it and then we actually hit the PTT to get out of there. Now notice there's a little clock there that we have the auto power off on. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't want that on. We have an automatic range transponder system. That's really cool. If you're with a bunch of guys, say search and rescue, this radio will transmit with, uh, will basically talk to other radios and, and make sure that you're constantly in range with the other parties in your search party. Yeah. So really cool. Uh, then you got your automatic range transponder interval, your busy channel lockout. You can turn the beep on or off, whether it's key or key and uh, whatever SC means. We've got a bell, not something you're probably going to use in your day to day life. CWID, uh, this is for the automatic range transponder system. So it'll automatically send your, your ID CW to make sure that you're, you're still with your party. Here's how you would write the CW. Uh, your DC voltage, your DCS, digital coded squelch code. This DT delay sets the DTMF code transmission delay time. Uh, DT set selects uh, the auto dialer memory channel for DTMF. A lot of this stuff you're, you're not going to necessarily need uh, in your day to day life. 13 is the DT speed, so DTMF auto dialer sending speed. You got your edge beep. Basically, if you're on the edges of the, of the VFO, it'll beep when you're when you're uh, out of band. LED busy when it's receiving, the LED will go on. And then same thing with LED transmit. When you're transmitting, the LED will go on. Here you can lock it. You can lock the keys, whether it's the front panel or the PTT. MTCL, not something I've ever used, but it selects the function of the monitor or the T-call switch, which is this, this, this uh, top side button here. So I'm not sure why you would need that, but it's got it. Here you can delete your memory channels. Here you can actually tag your memory channels. So if I want to, if I were in memory mode, notice how my channels have names, right? So that's where you would go to name them is in the memory tag. Pager is a unique feature where say you've got a bunch of radios all on the same frequency uh, of the same radio type. Maybe you're in a group and you want to just call one person. Well, you can actually set this up as a pager to only call that one individual versus having everyone hear your conversation. So that's kind of a unique feature. Not, not something that um, I've ever really used, but you can, you know, if you're maybe you're out camping and you, you just want to talk to, you know, little Timmy and, and not let little Johnny know what you're talking about, uh, you would set that up. And then the next few pages have to do with uh, the paging uh, and how to set that up. Priority revert is talking about um, just turning the feature on or off. 
The instructions say see priority revert mode for details. Again, not something that uh, you're typically gonna use. So here you have password on or off. So you can have a password uh, when you turn the radio on or off. And then this password DWT is where you'd actually go to set that password. So that's cool, it keeps your radio kind of private if you were. Here's your squelch. So you can change it from whatever S unit you want. Usually keep mine on three is uh, pretty good. You've got your repeater, automatic repeater shift. So when you type in frequencies, it'll either give you a plus or minus offset uh, automatically without having to type it in. Kind of an annoying feature on this. I usually keep this off. For some reason, when I type in some of the simplex frequencies, it automatically wants to shift it plus or minus. Like say I just type in 446.000, it gives it an offset and it's kind of annoying. So I usually do keep this off. Yeah, see it's off there. Uh, kind of a quirk in the system there, but uh, it also can be a useful feature if you're trying to program in repeaters. Here's your repeater frequency. So you can change uh, what your offset actually is. Now your repeater shift. Click on that, we've got simplex, and then you can go plus or minus repeater or simplex. So that's how you're gonna do your plus or minus offset or simplex if you don't want a shift on the repeater. Your receive save is basically uh, a receive battery saver interval. So basically you can set this to 200 milliseconds to two seconds. And during this time, the receiver is not gonna be receiving. So it saves your battery a little bit. I usually just leave it off. Then your scan lamp, uh, this just turns the lamp on and off when it's scanning. Scan resume, this is gonna basically configure what happens when you're in scan mode and the radio finds a signal. So depending on whether it's busy or hold or time, you can adjust those things. Skip, you can skip certain memory channels if you don't necessarily wanna scan every memory channel, you can choose to skip them. Squelch type here, you're gonna tell the radio what type of tone you're gonna have and the repeater that I have on is a digital tone, so we'll leave that on digital. Step is gonna be the step for your uh, VFO, or when you hit the up or down arrows, just how, how the increment of steps each plus or minus will do. Tone frequency is where you're gonna set the tone for, here's the receive tone, you can hit the VFO, there's your transmit tone, that's where you're actually gonna set that. You got your timeout timer, so how long you're gonna talk before the radio turns off. Your transmit power, high, low, medium. Transmit save is the transmit battery saver and this just turns it on or off. I'm not really sure what that actually does. VFO split, you can actually set this up to just work split mode, which is how our repeaters are gonna work. But if you just wanna work split without a repeater, I don't know why they have this in as a separate function, but say you key it in on 14652 and uh, you want that as your receiving stage uh, frequency and you want to transmit on 146.58, you can do that. You can set it up to work split. Vox is your voice operated transmission, so you don't have to hit the PTT. You can just talk and it'll automatically uh, transmit for you. Here you've got your broadband FM transceive, so you basically enable or disable wide FM, just the band, the, the width of your signal. And then here is where you will actually decide whether you want it wide or narrow. So this turns wide or narrow on or off, and then this says, I want wide or narrow. And then here, this is something that's, that's a unique feature, weather alert. So this has NOAA broadcast uh, frequencies inside of it. And if there's an actual like NOAA alert, if this is turned on, if there's any kind of weather emergency or something, this will open up and go to the weather station so you can hear what kind of weather, whether there's a tornado or a hurricane or uh, whatever the case is. So that's, that's a really useful feature in there. I like that. And that's it for the menus. Some other useful features here, obviously you've got, we're in uh, memory mode right now, but you can hit VFO and you've got VFO A. If you hit the band, you've got either VHF or UHF. You also have VFO B and on this band, you have an FM radio as well. So uh, as well as VHF. So you have VHF, UHF, and FM radio. That's only on the B band that you get the FM radio, but that's a cool feature to have if you wanna rock out to uh, some music while you're hiking or something. So, and the speaker on this thing is really loud. We'll do an audio test in a minute. Uh, that's kinda it. One other thing I wanna show you, these, these P1 and P2 buttons. So P2 I already have set for power, because I like to readily access that. 
Uh, but I don't have P1 set for anything. Maybe I have it on VFO. I might have it on VFO. So let's say I want to change that and let's say I want to use that for my, uh, I want to monitor the voltage for the radio. So I can go find wherever the voltage is here. DC voltage and I'm going to long press P1 and then hit the PTT. Now when I press P1, see I get the voltage showing up there. So very easy to just program these. Go back and forth, hit the PTT to get out of there. So really cool. Now uh, let me give you a quick sample of what the audio sounds like on this. The speaker is ridiculously loud. I'm really, really happy with the audio quality of this. Testing one, two, testing one, two. This is K8 MRD testing the audio of the ASU FT4XR on receive. Check two, check two, sibilance. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. K8 MRD. This is an audio test of the ASU FT4XR. This is K8 MRD. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Check two, check two, sibilance. Sibilance. K8 MRD. So there we have it, gang. A quick look at the Yesu FT4XR, a very capable radio from Yesu. Uh, I will leave a link to Gigaparts in the description. It's not an affiliate link. It's not a sponsored video. I just like Gigaparts and I like this radio. So hopefully that helps. You've seen the ins and outs of it, the functions, the features, the benefits. And uh, if you're looking to upgrade from a Bofang or maybe, like I said, just looking to have a second radio to kind of knock around, uh, maybe the Yesu FT4XR is a good candidate for you. So at 90 bucks, it's kind of kind of hard to not just have one. That's really why I bought it, because it was cheap. So, <laughs> guys, if you like this kind of content, you want to see more, do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter, and we will see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff 73, guys.